Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to cover list basics in Python. This time, when I say lists, I do mean lists, because unlike in C++ or Java, they're not called arrays, but lists. Lists have some similarities and differences when compared to arrays. The similarities are that they can be used to collect similar pieces of data, which act like a collection of variables. The lists are also indexable, meaning that you can refer to an element in the list by providing the name of the list, followed by brackets, and inside of those brackets, you provide the index. Most of the ways that you would work with arrays in Java or C++ can translate over to Python. For now, I strongly recommend using the same programming logic to perform your assignments. It's very important that you fully understand and practice the fundamentals, that you can fully comprehend the way your program is behaving the way that it is. I re the reason I say this is that Python has so many built-in functions and libraries that will allow you to abstract away a lot of the details. There's nothing wrong with abstraction when you're trying to quickly produce some scripts, and they can be very useful. However, I feel that it would be a disservice of me to encourage using these abstractions if it means that it has you think less critically about the data in your program. The last thing I want to mention is that since Python is interpreted rather than compiled, you can absolutely make syntax errors without knowing because the program is only checked as each line of code is executed. A mistake several lines down will only be caught when you reach that point, and it's tougher to check when you have branching. Now that I've given my two cents on the matter, let's look at some operations we can perform in Python. So let's say that I want to create a list. How do we do that? Well, let's just give it a name. So I'll just put some numbers uh, for the name of my list. And I'll assign it some empty brackets. So this right here is an empty list. This is, quote unquote, an array with um, no values. It's, it's completely empty. I could use an uh, array initializer, a list initializer, by providing some values like this. So now I have the three values inside of here. Let's say that I want to refer to um, this value right here. Well, we know that arrays or lists begin at index 0. So this is index 0, 1, and 2. So let's say I want to print out index number 2, which is the value 3. What I can do is I can just use um, the, the function print. And to print out the element 3, what I'll do is I'll write the name of the list. And inside of those brackets, I'll provide the index. So at index 2, so 0, 1, 2, that's the element 3. So if I run this, it should print out the element 3. As a reminder, when you're going through this example, note the spacing or the indentation that we're practicing just because it will be relevant. If not, you're going to run into um, uh, some syntax errors. So that's how we index um, uh, these lists. What we can also do is, um, unlike C++ and Java, uh, when we print out an array, you if you have tried that, you'll notice that you'll get some funny hexadecimal number because that's the memory address of the array. In this case, if you actually want to print out um, the, the array, so if I say print some numbers, you'll get the entire list printing out, although it is in list notation. No, notice the brackets. If we want to print out um, each of the elements, um, there are some ways of going about that. We can abstract away some of the details um, by using um, the keyword for. So for, and then you can use any name in, or any variable name inside of here. You could say 4x. You might see that a lot. Um, I'm just going to call it element. So this is the current element. For the current element in our array, what I want to do is print out each of those elements. You don't have to use the word element. You can use x. You can use any variable name. But you'll notice that it's going to print out each of those elements, 1, 2, and 3. That's one way of going about it. Um, let's take a look at some other methods of printing out these values. What you also can do is you can do it through an index um, using a for loop. So what we can do is we can say for, and this is a continuation of using a for loop in the previous videos. If you haven't watched those, please make sure to watch those. Um, so let's say for counter in range. And so what the what the range function does is it's it works exactly like a, a for loop. It begins. Um, there's, there's three parameters. The first parameter is the start value. The next parameter is the ending value, minus 1. Um, and then the third parameter, if you'd like, is the increment value. So let's say we want to start off at index 0. And I want to end at index 2. So I'm going to write the 3 here, because it's always going to be the second value, minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's going to be the last index. And let's say I want to increment by 1. I could just write it like this. So this means I'm going to start at the index 0. I'm going to end at the index 2. And I'm going to increment by 1 each time. And so we're going to go ahead and use this to print out our elements. How do I print out an element? I just say some numbers at the current index. 
And so we could do it just the same like this. Um, we can use uh, take advantage of some of the default values. We know that by default, the first param um, parameter is always going to start off at zero um, by default. Um, all you need to do is provide that second parameter. So this is a size of three. So I could just write three and it would just print out all of the indices from zero to two. So zero, one, two, there we have it just the same. Um, but let's say you don't want to hard code the value three. How can I get the length of this entire array? Right now it has three elements. How, how can I get that length? What you can use is the len function. So I could write len, which refers to the length. And inside of there, I have to provide um, the list, the name of the array. So some numbers. So this refers to three as well, because in this case, I have three values. Let's go ahead and add four. So let's just add one more. So this refers to four values. And so what that means is it's going to start at index zero, and it's going to continue all the way to index three, incrementing by one each time. And so if I were to print this out, it's going to print out the values one, two, three, four. Um, let's change it up. Let's write 99. And that should also be the same. Another way to print out these values, let's say if you don't, um, if you don't want them to be on separate lines. Notice how each time I print out these values, they're always on a, on a separate line. Let's say you want them all on the same line. You can absolutely do that. Let's take a look at how we would go about doing that. So when we go through all of our values, so for, let's just call it index in the range of our length of some numbers. So here we're going to have a counter from 0 all the way to size minus 1. What I can do is I can write print. Um, we're going to print the element. So in this case, I can print, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and print the element. So what I would do is I would write some numbers, some numbers at the index. Um, I think I wrote index. Yeah, there we go. And we're also going to write another parameter, and that's going to be end. And what this means is after we finish printing out a value, what do we want to end it with? By default, this is ending to a new line, so it's indenting each time. What if I wrote a star here? Well, in this case, it's not going to indent every time I print out one of those values. It's actually going to print out on the same line. And once I print out a number, once I print out the current element, it's going to have a, um, an asterisk. And then it's going to print out the next number, followed by another asterisk, and so forth and so forth. So I, for now, we'll write an asterisk just so it becomes a bit more visible. If you don't want the asterisk, which is understandable, you can just write a space here. And then that way, you can get it printing out on the same line. So these are just some fun things that we can do in Python. Um, there's lots to, lots of little functions and tricks that we can perform. I don't want you to get caught up in too much of that. I'm just trying to show the, um, uh, just all of the possibilities. Now, with regards to this assignment, something that I don't want to encourage is using a lot of the built-in functions. So say, for example, this assignment is asking you to find uh, the the average, it's the min, the max. You can do that um, using some of the functions uh, that are built in. So say, for example, if I want to add all of, if I want to print out the sum, I just say sum, and I would provide in the name of my list. And so you'll notice that's going to be the sum, which is 10. I can also print out the min, the max, right? So don't do this. I know that it's available. The min is 1. The max is, max is going to be 4. I don't recommend doing this because it's only going to take away uh, from your knowledge of the fundamentals. Um, there's also other functions. So for example, let's say if you wanted the average, you could say get the sum of your list. And then you can also divide it by the length of your array. So there's four numbers inside of here. So it's going to be the, the sum or the total divided by the amount of values that I have. So in this case, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. Um, there we go. Uh, and so these are some ways to take away uh, a lot of the programming logic. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to try and, and follow the same logic that we have done in C++ and, and Java. So what are some other things to consider um, that are possible? So let's say, for example, if I want to check if a value exists inside of here, I can say if, um, let's, let's say I'm searching for the value 3. If 3 is in. So if 3 in, it's not completely perfect English, but it, it's, it's pretty close. So if 3 in some numbers, so if we find 3, then I can put 
that I found found the number. There we go. Versus if I don't find the number, then I could say not found, not found. And so if I were to run this, we found it. Um, but if I'm searching for, let's say, 50, um, we can do that as well. And it'll say not found. There's other ways of going about that. You can use the index function. So for example, I can print the, the index of a value that I'm searching for. So let's say I'm searching for um, the value number two. At what index would I find it? I would find it at index one, because this is index zero. This is index one. And so let's go ahead and um, see how we would do that. For right now, I'm just printing everything out so that you're able to see it. You don't actually have to print it out to use these. Um, but let's go ahead and say some numbers, the name of our array, dot um, index. So we're searching for a particular index of which value? I said we're searching for the value 2. So from the value 2, it's going to tell us which index it is found at. And so that should be index 1. There we go. Um, but if you're looking for something that's not within your array, like let's say 50, that's not in there, it's actually going to throw what's called an exception. And what that says, what that is, is it pretty much says there's something wrong um, something wrong happened while your program was running, and it's letting us know. It's uh, pretty nice because it's it's very descriptive. It says 50 is not in our list. So that's that's a very nice um, exception that it threw. Um, but it also means you can't continue executing the rest of your program. So you may not want to use something like this. Um, some other things to consider, and so here's where we're going to get a little bit more technical, is that a list differs from an array in that they don't have to be the same data type. In C++ and Java, you were, con you were constricted or uh, constrained uh, to having the same data type. So in this case, they're all integers. I don't have to do that. I can go ahead and write, let's say, hi, a string. And I can write a double. Let's do 2.11. So notice I have an integer, I have a string, and I have a double. Let's go ahead and print the data types of all of these values. So I can say 4x in some numbers. So this is for each element. So this is the current element. What I want to do is I want to print the data type of each of those elements. So I'm going to print not the value, but I'm going to print its data type. And so notice as we print it out, it's going to be integer, string, and then double, or float. And so you can have as many different data types as you'd like. Uh, this also means you, you, know, you have to be careful because if, let's say, you're using the sum function, the sum function only works if you're working with numerics because you can sum the values 1, 2, and 3. You can sum 1, the word high, and then 2.11. But the, the first number, the third number, yes. But you can't, you can't add high to that. It's not going to know how to do that. It's going to throw an exception. Actually, let's go ahead and just prove that. So if I want to sum, if I want to sum uh, some numbers, notice that I'm not printing it out because it's just going to throw an exception, or it's just going to have an error anyways. Um, but just know that you want to be very careful with with how you're working with your data in Python. It seems a lot easier, but it's also prone to a bit more errors. Um, something else to consider are, let's say, if we want to, let's, let's go ahead and get rid of some of these values. Let's say 2 and 3. Um, another difference is that with lists, you can append data to it. It's not like static arrays in Java or C++, where I mentioned the example of having a maximum of 10 items. You can continue adding items to it. It's very flexible, or it's dynamic in that sense. Um, so how do I add more values to it? I can just go ahead and append it. So I can use the keyword append. So for example, sum numbers.append. And let's say I want to add the value 7 to the end. And there we go. We've just appended the value 7. So it's placed right at the end. And if I want to print, so let's just print the entire array. So if I want to print some numbers, it's going to print 1, 2, 3, and 7. Right? And we can use this to go ahead and have an empty array and populate it with user input. Let's take a look at an example of that. Just because we've already seen how we can, um, we can have a, an array initializer to be able to populate it. Um, but let's let's go ahead and transition over to using user input to populate our array. Actually, before we do, let's print out uh, one more value, one more element using an index. So this is index 2, 0, 1, 2. But in Python, there's some kind of weird um, things that we can do, but very you know can be useful. Um, it's, it's very unusual at first, but, um, but like I said, they, they can be helpful. So let's say I want to print the value 3. You can use the index 2. 
Alternatively, you can actually print the index. So if I want to print this element 3, I, can, I know that it's at the end. So this is also the index negative 1. Sounds kind of strange. Uh, previously, we just used that as a flag, but that's actually an index. That's going to be index negative 1. So if I print this out, notice it's going to be the value 3. If I print out negative 2, can you guess what it'll be? It'll be this next value, right? So it'll be 2. And so it just starts at the end, and then it moves backwards. All right, so that's kind of nice. Um, but now let's go back to user input. So let's just leave this as an empty list. There's there's nothing in it. There's no there's no memory that's been really allocated for it. There's no elements. So what we're going to do is let's write a let's write a uh, sentinel. Actually, let's let's just populate it with a sentinel value. So populates with a sentinel value controlled while loop. While loop. And as a reminder, just in case uh, you would like a review, step one is getting some user input. Step two is the condition. You know, while, while the user input is not the sentinel value. And step three is user input once again. And that's so we can eventually terminate the loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out some statement saying, actually, we can get user input right away. So we can say that this is the user input. We're going to prompt the user with some kind of statement saying, uh, please enter the name, the name of, of, of a student. Please enter the names of students. There we go. So let's just get a roster going on. So maybe not some numbers. Let's just call, go ahead and call this roster. So please enter the names of some students. There we go. And inside of here, it's going to input this value. It's going to take the whatever response you have, and it's going to store it in the uh, user input value. Actually, let's let's call this actually student name. There we go, student name. And so there's really three steps that are going on. You're getting asked a question. Um, it's it's taken in as a string, and then it's going to be stored inside of the student name. We're going to say while, no parentheses. This isn't C++. So I apologize while the student's name is not equal to the sentinel value let's what is what is the sentinel value let's say or negative 1 to quit or actually 99 to quit if they write 99 or yeah so while the student name is not equal to 99 so if they hit 99 or write in 99 it'll stop then what we want to do is we want to add that name to our roster so how do I add it to my roster? I say roster.append, the most recently entered student name. The next thing we want to do is we've written our user input, our condition. The last part is getting user input once again. Here, we're going to get another student name. And we're going to use the input function to get that information. Once this is complete, we've already populated our array. So let's go ahead and print out this array. Let's print this out. So for um, elements or, or for name in in roster. And remember, you can replace name with anything you'd like. Roster is the name of the array, so you actually can't replace that. And then I want to print uh, the, the names. And so I want to print each of those student names that I have entered. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's enter the name Jake, Bob, Dylan. And we're going to enter 99 to quit. And there we have it, Jake, Bob, and Dylan. You can also use, um, rather than using this approach, you can use the, the range function. So I could say for, um, let's say, index in range. And then here, I have to get the size of my roster. So in order to do that, we're going to use the length function and provide the name of the array. And this way, we can refer to each of the values with an index. So what we're going to do is we're going to print the element. In order to do that, we need the name of the array followed by the index. Right? And there we have it. So let's put in some names like Jake, Bob, Dylan, and 99 to quit or to end that loop. And it's going to print it out just the same. And using the index is very useful when you want to be able to save that index value and then refer to it a bit later. I feel that's sufficient for today for this lesson. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Once again, there's, it's very flexible in C++. Um, or I, I apologize, it's very flexible in Python. Just make sure to practice your fundamentals.
Thank you for your patience. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you programmers later.